Hi everybody, this is Alan from AbletonLiveTutorial.com Now, it actually feels a bit daft saying that, considering that the website has not been updated in over two years. However, that will be changing. I had to make quite a few changes in my life and unfortunately creating videos for you lovely people on YouTube got knocked down the list a bit. However, um, I'm back again and I'm just quickly going to show you some of the things that I've been working on recently and uh, if any of you are interested in learning how to set this up obviously just leave some messages below and if there's enough of an interest I will actually go to the effort to show you how, how to build one of these for yourself okay um, now on top of that, there is also something else that I want to tell you about at the end, but I'm going to I'm going to show you this first now. What we're looking at here now, basically, what I have is this is what I have been using to sort of DJ with, if you like, if you can call it DJing. It's it's more like live remixing, and what I do is I've got three channels that have got tunes in it, and I've simply got filters on each channel. Okay. I've got an external, I've got a Chaos Pad 3 for doing external effects when I'm playing out tunes, so I tend to use that more often than I use the Ableton effects, okay? But anyway, that's, that's by the by, that's not the important bit. The bit that I want to actually show you is the drum rack. Now, it looks quite complicated, but it doesn't need to be complicated. Now, for, first of all, I'm just, I'm going to switch it on and mess about with it, just so you can get an idea for what's happening here, okay? So, first of all, that's the loop that you're listening to. Okay, so it's just a nice, simple, there's not really too much going on, okay? Now, I'm going to bring that volume down just a little, so we can explain a few things for you. Now, what you'll notice here is that at the beginning we've got this uh, plugin, this MIDI plugin at the start that basically mixes up. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll kill all of these. Right, now you can hear that hi hat. Now, let me just tune this hi hat a little bit. waiting on it picking up. Okay, now, look at the, you can see the channel, um, the hi-hat channel here, where I'm moving the mouse, okay, you can see it, uh, the volume flicking away there. You can see that the volume is jumping up and down, and that's because I have used add some random as you can see down here to randomize the velocity okay so when I as you can see in here when you look at the hi-hat it's uh, hi-hat one there you can see that there's no velocity see these little tabs down here I have not input any velocity into them they're all just the same okay however you can see that the velocity is changing which is it gives the, the beat a little bit of texture in it okay now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to switch it off so that's what you would have without the random velocity Okay, now when you actually start bringing in you can see how it bounces, like you can get your hi-hats to bounce off the snare quite nicely. Okay, so so anyway, so that's the first thing. It's all we've got um, some sort of help here to to randomise things up a little bit, okay? Now the second thing that you'll notice is 
Down here, we've got two kicks, we've got a snare, we've got a hi hat, we've got a hi hat again, and we've got some percussion. Um, now, what you will, what I need to do is I need to show you inside these. Okay, so if we're on the kicks, what you'll see for the kick is that it's actually, <coughs> excuse me, one of the samplers. Okay, now. What I'm going to actually show you next is something that, if you don't know how to do this, it will completely blow you away, okay? Because it did blow me away when I first learned of this, okay? So, you come into, into the sampler, now, you click on Zone, and it brings up this screen here that you can see, and... Everything that I am scrolling through there is individual kick samples. Okay, so when you look at the the big sample at the bottom down here, you can see these are all different. Now, if you click on SEL for selector, and you can see this orange tab appears. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to turn one knob on my MIDI controller and you can see that moving. You can also see it down the bottom where it's got kick. You can see that moving. Now, what that is actually doing is that is allowing me to use one knob to select through up to 127 different kick drums and I can do that on the fly okay now to let you hear what's actually happening I'm gonna so there's one type of kick drum now what I've also done is I have given myself a knob to control the decay so you can hear that I've also got a transpose. So you can see how you can have full control, but however, what we'll start doing is Now you can see I'm just using one knob down the bottom here, the, kick, the, the knob that I've named kick, and as I turn it, so you can see that it makes. Uh, sort of jamming if you want to basically what I use this for now kill that just now is I will be mixing on three decks and I break the tracks that I'm mixing up into smaller samples and sections of tunes so it makes it easy for me to bring a tune in at a, at a break or when the, the bass drops or whatever um, but what I can also do is I can also add an extra layer of texture through adding my own drum loops okay and as I'm using the drum loops I can also completely change the drum kit on the fly now what we're going to do now is we've shown you the kick okay now we're going to come back over you can see that we've got um, snare so click on the snare and you can see it's exactly the same thing, but this time it's all different snares. I'm going to come along and let you see it. Now, the difference on the snare is, instead of controlling the decay, I'm controlling the attack instead. Okay, so again, if I turn the knob, you can see it's selecting. You can see the, the selector bar along here. And you can see that when I'm here, I've selected Big Clap. When I'm here, that's 
this one. And I come along to here, that would be that one. So you can see that it cycles through them. Uh, I'm going to bring in the snare. Now I know there's there's other things that are not snares. It's sort of snares and clap. It's, it's just noises that I would like to use in the position where the the snare hit normally hits. Turn the attack to zero. Makes it nice and sharp. And as a Obviously with a snare, normally you like it to be nice and punchy, so that's for the snare. Best to leave it open if you want to punch one, but what I actually use this for is just adding a little bit of extra noise into someone else's tune, so if they've already got a snappy snare, I might bring in a, another snare noise that sort of complements it, but I maybe just uh, turn the attack down a wee bit just to... So it kind of pulses along in the background with it. Okay, so anyway, and then you can see for the hi hats, I can turn one knob. Now, I'm going to actually show you the hi hat to show you what we're doing here. Hi hat. You can see when the attack's open, you get the kind of sharp connection. And you can still see that the, the volume in the snare is still bouncing about. Uh, the velocity, if you like, so. You can see as we turn the attack down, you get a nice... You can you can basically make almost any any noise that you want when you've you've got this set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to minimise all this down just so you're not uh, confused by it all. Now all that's playing is this sample here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start.
there you go. Now, you could hear all the variation that was going on, and that was just one loop. But I was able to, on the fly, just by turning a few knobs, cycle through hundreds of different drum noises. Okay. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is, for example, let's see... Um, just bring... So there you go, there's a, just a, a random tune playing, okay? And you can hear me doing the build with the percussion. And I'm going to turn the tone down on it. So there you go, you can hear, at the moment, the only noise that we've got in, the only one that we've added, is that percussion over here. Now, if I wanted to beef up the... You can hear it's a, it's a four on the floor uh, beat, but I have this one set up, so... That's just added a nice kind of sub bass on every second kick. And then we can maybe add a clap in it. And if that clap isn't very good, or that snare isn't very good, find a different one. And we'll maybe kill the bass a little bit on it. Back in again. Maybe let this hit on the breakdown. And so you can see over here, all we've got is a sub bass. We saw that. Now, obviously, I'm not playing out the song as I would play it if I was actually mixing. I would have these playing mixed in on the filters as well. What I'm trying to show you is how you can... So there you go, now, so let's see how far this video is at the moment, it's 19 minutes, so basically if, if you're interested in seeing that, uh, or if you're interested in being able to have a drum rack built up so you can jam live with it as you're uh, doing a DJ set and you can change all the drums on the fly without having to load up samples or anything. Let me know, and if there's enough of an interest in it, I will uh, create the video that sh uh, takes you through the steps of how I made it. So that's the first thing. Now, just the last thing, just before this video gets too long. Now, I'm, I'm very aware that whenever I make an Ableton video, um, I am not a professionally trained uh, music producer or anything. I've not 
ever been to college, I've not learned any of that type of thing. However, that doesn't mean that you can't get value from what I'm showing you. But the, the limitations of what I am showing you is that you're not going to get a good grounding in the basics, okay? Because I've been using Ableton Live for maybe, I think it was since Ableton 4. Before that, I was using Fruity Loops. Before that, I was using Dan CG. <laughs> now, for anyone who's old enough to remember Dan's EG, um, <clears throat> you'll get an idea of how long I've been messing about with... Uh, music production. However, the cost of getting proper training is normally right out of the budget of many people. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you something that you, if, if you actually go ahead and come into this, you will thank me, okay? Now, one of my friends I met through creating Ableton videos, I met him through YouTube, I've spoke to him uh, since, and he's a really he's a good guy. Now, uh, Jason Ward, he has a background. Like his as Jason Ward's uh, dad actually uh, was in. Let's see, brought it up earlier on. Have a listen, little listen to this for a few seconds. So as you can hear, it's a tune from back in the 60s by a band called The Roosters. Now, Jason is a music producer, but he's from a mu music stock. His dad, and if, if you're interested in this, come to his About Me page, and you can read about it. He tells you about it. Um, his dad was a songwriter, guitarist, and vocalist in a band called The Rooster, uh, and had a couple of hit songs in the late 60s. Now... What I recall from all this is the studio out in the backyard where I first found a love for knobs and faders. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is to try and let you know that if, if when you're picking someone that you're going to learn from, their, uh, their credentials aren't always really that important. For example, a lot of people like the things that I show them. However, do you think that you're going to learn more from me or more from a guy who's a music producer and he grew up with his dad uh, being involved in music production in the 60s? <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Now, the only problem is, if you were to look at his products page, let's see, like for example, he gives you a thing called Ultimate Ableton Master Template. It's $127. It's quite expensive. Now, I won't uh, say it's not worth that because it actually is. Um, I had this uh, a long time ago. However, £127 just to get like one of his many trainings, as you can see here, is a lot of money. Now, Jason recently sent me a message to say that he, had, he wanted to make things so more people could get involved without having to spend a fortune. And uh, what he's done is he's actually created a membership uh, section on his website. The only problem is, his website doesn't make it very clear as to what you get and how you how you get it and all of these types of things. So basically what I'm wanting to say to you is, if you are interested in learning Ableton Live, the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is spend the massive sum of $19.99. And it's just month by month. So if you have it for a month and you can't afford it, you can stop it. And to stop it, you do it through. It's all through PayPal. Okay, so it makes it easy. There's no messing about with cards. Now, um, I'm a member. And I'm just going to quickly take you inside and show you what you get access to. Now, where are we? What I'm going to do is log out and back in, so it takes us back to the start. Just so you can see, get... Right, here we go. Now, if you sign up, you will get access to log in to this page. And it logs you in. There we go. Now, remember all those products that uh, you could see? Which one was it? 
yeah, remember all these products, the Ultimate Ableton Master Template, the Ultimate Ableton Collection, Collection 2, Advanced Warping Collection, so 127 30, You can see there how much it, you might think it's going to cost you. However, excuse me, I've got far too many windows open on my computer here. When you come into it, Ableton Producers Playground, all access, you get access to all the all the, the products, so if we click on it, members only streaming videos, Ableton Collection 1, Ableton Collection 2, Advanced Warping, the Ableton Remixing Walkthrough, Ableton DJ Live Performance Collection. So you can see that you get access to all of these inside the members area, and then this is just, this one here is just Ableton Ultimate 1 collection and you can see you're getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, you don't need to make count them. Each of these is a link to a video. Okay, it also teaches you synthesis, it teaches you filter envelopes, how to use operator, DJing, and this is a, a great overview of, like, for someone who, even someone who's been using Ableton a while, this is really, there's going to be so much in here that is going to click and you're going to go, ah, right, understand it now. Okay, so, you can see there that you're getting all of that, but on top of that, you also get, we're going to come into the All Access area. Hello members, welcome to the All Access Pass. When you come down, you're getting the, it's doing a new Ableton Challenge, so you get access to that. The Ableton Master template, including all the presets, the racks, everything set up the way that he set it up. He's uh, giving you those to download for your own productions. Um, he's written lots of ebooks, which, again, you might not think that reading an ebook about your uh, your mental state is actually going to help your music production, but again, have a read at it. He's the guys from a musical uh, background going all the way back to the 60s. He's, he knows what he's talking about. Now, on top of that, you can see everything that you're getting. Now, don't be daft. Don't go into products and spend £130 on uh, just one of them. Just come to his homepage. I'll give you the link under the video so you can get straight there. Scroll down to the bottom. Want to be a part of this? The Ableton Producers Playground, 19 a month. Just click on the checkout with PayPal. And then you get access to it. You just put in your your PayPal email, your password, hit pay, and then you'll get your password sent out. And you can start using it straight away. So, so anyway, that is pretty much all that I have for you at the moment. Okay. Um, if anyone is interested in learning a little bit more about what I have uh, just shown you with regards to my own Ableton stuff. Uh, leave some messages, and if there's, as I say, if there's a big enough interest, I'll make another video for you. Okay, thanks again. Nice to see you again. Bye.